All right, mate, how you doing? And welcome to my first proper Euro 2020 video because today I'm going to the England-Croatia game and I'm absolutely buzzing. It's the morning of the match. Um, I haven't slept well, I'm not going to lie. Last night, you know, I think it was mostly because of the heat because it's very hot in England right now. But there's also that, that nervous energy that I get before these tournaments, that excitement, but that anxiousness as well because these are like some of my favourite times in the world you know these international football tournament times i love them i love them you know i went to russia last time out I took you guys with me i went to france for euro 2016 i took you guys with me and we're going to do it again a bit closer to home this year obviously with most of england games being at wembley but today is the first game it's a tough one against croatia obviously they knocked us out of the world cup three years ago we have played and beat them since then and they're not at their, the height of the powers they were at a few years ago and they only beat us on extra time don't forget so i'm confident but it's the hardest game of the group for me, and I hope we get it right. And there's another team selection that I'm definitely keen to get right, which is my team on this brand new app I've been playing, which I want to tell you about now. Right, this is the game. It's called Ultimate Fan. Now, first thing I'm going to say is do not worry that the Euros have already started. I know that's what you're thinking. Oh, the Euros have started. I've missed the chance. No, you haven't. Okay, Ultimate Fan is a game that runs week to week. So you can join whenever you want. New game week, new chance to win. Whatever happened in the last game week doesn't matter. Okay, now this is a free game to play, crucially. It involves opening packs and you can win money. In each round of the group stage, there's a 15k prize pot up for grabs. That goes up to 20k for each round of the knockouts. In the group stage, the top 340 players that play on this app will share the prizes. Uh, there's a top player getting 2.5k. And then the top 100 will share the prizes in the knockout stages. Let me make this clear. This is a brand new app, okay? There's not a lot of users on here. You've got a massive chance of winning, guys. Get on it. One thing I've got to say right now, this is for over 18s only, and it's only UK and Ireland based. So unfortunately, if you're under 18 or you're not from the UK, it's not for you at this current time. So you get a free pack when you go in the game, and I'm going to open that right now, show you what I've got. You make a team with the players and items you get in those packs, and they get you points. The more points, the more chance of winning money. Right, base pack. Open free 10-card pack. I've got to swipe up to open that. Let's see what I get. England! I've got England! What a start! That means if England do well, I get more points. Polish player, Kaderberek, Thorgan Hazard. That's not bad. Thorgan Hazard. Di Lorenzo from Italy. Berghuis. Skriniar from Slovakia. I'll take that. Uh, Bertolite. Smith from Wales. Murrow Bonfim. Never heard of it. Okay, so that's my opening pack. By the way, every card has got a little unique number on it because you actually own the card because they're registered on the blockchain. That's pretty decent. And this is the scoring. So fantasy-wise, 10 points for a goal, 4 points for an assist. Now, you can improve your team by becoming a member and paying for some packs. Now, the most you can spend is gold membership, which costs £5 a month, and the tournament only runs over two months. So £10 is the most you can pay, and it will massively increase your chance of winning. You don't need to buy the packs, but if you do, you've got more chance of, of winning the big money. Silver's just 2 99 but I'm going to go for the 4 99 gold option. Here we go. The big gold pack. Wilson from Wales. Golovin, a gold player from Russia. Schick from Czech Republic. Okay. Team's looking better. Is it a winning team? I'm not sure. I might need to improve it over the coming weeks. That is Ultimate Fan. I recommend you get involved. Check out the link in the description. Thanks to them for supporting this video. And honestly, guys, I genuinely mean this. It is nothing to lose. It's free to play. You don't have to get the packs if you don't want to. And you can win some money. Check out the link in the description. Download the app if you want to get involved. Good luck. Sorry, guys. I've just come back in as I'm editing this video. It's a couple of days later than when I filmed that piece. And I'm just going to tell you something. My brother is currently 12th in the world on this game. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say this is a new app. There's not loads of people playing it yet. So there's a real chance of winning something. As it stands, Seb will make 50 quid off a £5 pack that he bought. That's 10 times his money. But if he gets a few more points and he's still got some players to play in this game week he will get even more money. So this is why you've got to get involved. Ultimate fan, check it out. Okay, back to the football, and there's been a lot of chat going into this game about the team. I can't remember a first game of a tournament with so much speculation about what starting 11 we're going to play. Uh, there's a lot of good reason for that. We've got unbelievable squad depth in particular positions, like fullback, for example, in the attacking areas. So there's that choice that Gareth's got to make. But there's also some contentious areas, isn't there? There's, there's the centre-back spot, first of all, with no Maguire. Is he going to go with three centre-backs? Is he going to go with two in a back four? I'd prefer a back four, personally, and I'd go with Mings. I think Mings deserves the chance to silence the doubters. There's a lot of people, you know, not backing him, basically. But I would go with him because I think there's a chance Croatia might play a big boy up top. And Mings has got that extra height. You know, he's a big lad, very aerially dominant. And I want to see if he can pull through. So I would go with Mings. Uh, in centre-mid, there's the, obviously no Henderson, we think. 
So does he go Bellingham? I, I would start Bellingham as well. I'd give him a go in there. But there's always a chance he could go a little bit more, I don't want to say defensive, but you know he might go with like a Phillips and Rice combo. I expect Rice to start, but will Phillips be in there? And then in the attacking areas, I mean, on form, if you pick a team purely on form, I think people would love to see a triple combo of Mount, Grealish and Foden, but I don't expect us to see that. I actually don't think we should do that either. As much as I'd love to see those three play and I want to see them all get lots of minutes, I'm not sure it would work, personally. I think we need the pace of someone running in behind, and for me, that has to be Rashford or Sterling. Even though they might be not in the same form, and there's Sancho, obviously, as well, but I don't think he actually offers the same level of pace. I think he offers something different, but from tactically, I think we need a runner like that, and it's got to be Rashford or Sterling for me. I think that will actually help unlock the other more creative players. I think by having a runner in behind, you'll create space for the centre midfielders, for people like Mason Mount, to do what they do. So I think he'll start one of those two. I don't know which. For me, there's only like four players who like have to start. Maybe three. Definitely Stones, uh, Rice and Kane. I think we, we have to have those boys in. Everyone else could be you know, open to interpretation. For me, I would add Foden to that list. I think Foden's a generational talent. But I love Mount and I love Grealish. I feel like any combination of those players could work for us. But for me, I'd be giving Foden minutes every game. Obviously, Maguire, I fit into that as well when he's fit. I think Maguire is essential, but he's not there yet. But there's so much conversation online about uh, what team Gareth is going to play. There's so much like pre-match criticism and negativity. It's actually getting me down. Like We haven't even played the game yet. And I look online and people are like complaining about what Gareth may or may not do. It's like, guys... Lighten up. Like, you need to get your expectations addressed as an England fan, first and foremost. For us, yeah, we haven't won much yet. We just got to get wins. If we're going to be getting against the manager or the team or whatever before we've even kicked a ball in a tournament, we've got no chance of ever being happy in our life. Uh, we're going into a tournament, first game today, with a positive young squad, a manager we can get behind on a, well I can certainly get behind, on an emotional level, on a philosophical level. He represents me and my country as far as I'm concerned with the things he says and the things he does. Yeah, of course you want the best tactical manager and the most experienced manager generally, but international football is different, I think. You know, look at look at Yogi Lowe at, at Germany. He was relatively unknown when he took over at Germany. He was maybe made for international management. Maybe less so for club management. And maybe that's what Gareth is. For me, he embodies a lot of what I want an English manager to be. A man that I can get behind who represents me. And whilst he might not have had a distinguished club managerial career, I think he's done fantastically as an England manager. Like, a lot of people are not happy with things he's done in the past. But it's like, he's had one tournament. And he's equaled our second best ever World Cup, which is a semi-final loss. You know, only one England manager in the history of England managers has done better than Gareth Southgate. Fact. And that's Alf Ramsey, who obviously won us the World Cup in 66. So let's give him another chance, and let's not be getting at him before we've even played. We can win today. We can win today. And there'd be nothing to complain about, would there? Anyway, a couple other things I do want to address before we crack on. First of all, the Christian Eriksen incident that happened yesterday was truly shocking. You know, horrible to see. I'm so glad that he's... Um, Hopefully on the, on, the, on the road to recovery. Uh, I, I really hope he plays football again, but obviously bigger than that, he, he's alive and he's going to be able to be a dad to his kids and a husband to his wife, and that's the most important thing. And I think it just gives us all a stark reminder, guys. This can happen to anyone at any time. This guy's at peak physical fitness with the best medical care around him every day, you know, making sure he's in good nick to allow him to go and play a game like that at that level, and he's collapsed. So you've got to just enjoy every moment, guys. That's also kind of links to my previous point about being positive, not being negative, and being glass half full, not glass half empty. Like, don't allow things that haven't even happened to annoy you. Like, what team Gareth Southgate might play before you've even seen the result of that thing happen. You know, enjoy your life, enjoy your moments, spend time with your loved ones, and get behind your country at international football tournament time. That's my motto, because I absolutely love the Euros. Anyway, lots of talk about team selection but now it's time to head to Wembley. We've arrived near Wembley you can see the arch in the background here I've got the one and only Stevie CB with me. Hi guys. Dad there's a leaked lineup a potential leaked lineup we yeah. don't know if it's true but if it's true what are your thoughts particularly on on Trippier playing left back? Yeah I mean I don't mind Trippier enjoyed him in the World Cup but um, he's not going to be flying down the left wing is he's going to be cutting in yeah so, unless some chill while someone's got some niggles or whatever can't see why he's actually put him there. The only reasons I can think about it are this, exactly, unless you think, unless both left backs have got an issue, which I doubt, is 
He didn't take Ward Prowse, did he? So Trippier's the next best free kick taker. In fact, Trippier did score a free kick against mm. Croatia. We were there. We were there. Yeah, we I saw mean, it go the in. The thing is, if it goes well, is pick the right, the right people. Exactly. If it don't go well, then everyone's going to be on his back. What he's done is he's left a lot of room for criticism if we lose. Whereas if he picks a more popular team and we lose, it may be more directed at the players and the manager. But now they're going to be talking about the manager, his decision to play a right back, left back. But when you think about the full back options, that Southgate's got. It's just winners everywhere, winners. Apart from Luke Shaw, who's had a great season, he did win Player of the Year for Man United, but he was a Europa League finalist. Left backs, Chilwell, Champions League winner. Trippier as a right back slash left back, apparently. La Liga winner. James, Champions League winner. Carl Walker, Premier League winner. They're winners. And the only one that hadn't won something this year was Trent, who's got injured, obviously, and he's not here. So, got to get behind the boys regardless. What's going to happen today? We're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win and we look forward to the next game. You're already thinking about the next game? <laughs> we'll get maximum points today. We'll have a good entertaining game. A few goals. Kane's going to bag one at least. Have you got any post traumatic stress? Sterling to score to get his form back. Have you got any post traumatic stress from when we saw Croatia knock us out of the World Cup semi final in Russia? I've forgotten all about that. Yeah, just it's thought all, I'd remind you that. It's all about today. <laughs> got to get our own back. Right, I can hear the noises starting. We're very early. We're more than two hours before kickoff. I think actually like two and a half hours, but we have got the gold dust, the tickets, two of them to be precise. We're very lucky we were going to be in the uh, UEFA club, Bobby Moore situation uh, today. Thanks to Hisense, by the way, for providing these tickets. If you've seen my Instagram, you know I'm doing a bit of work with them. And they've sorted me out with tickets to this and to the final. And I've also got tickets I'm giving away on my Instagram as well. So make sure you follow me, Spen FC on Instagram. You might be coming to a Euros game at some point. We have found none other than Tom Williams from Hashtag Of Course. Tom, what are you thinking, mate? I'm really excited, I can't lie. Uh, I'm also very nervous. Normally, when I follow England in big tournaments, I have my negative head on, I just think, don't lose the first game. But today, with everything that we have in that final third, I'm going for a 2-0 England win. Come on, we'll take any kind of win, mate. Any kind of win will do. Look at this, it's the man mounted himself, Richie Vick, big England fan. What's happening today, Rich? Um, if the leaked lineup's anything to go by, then I'm worried. <laughs> but fingers crossed to get the result. I reckon England by one. You, you obviously wouldn't have played Trippier left back. Definitely not. When, it's not when you've got two left backs in the squad already. Who would you have started? Uh, sure. And as a centre back yourself, would you have gone with two at the back, and would you have gone with Mings, Stones? Which one you think it is? I would have gone two at the back. I would have gone White really? and Stones. I thought White did really well in the friendly. Dad's just pointed out that it's going to be the hottest day of the year so far. 29 degrees. 29 plus. If we're lucky. Do you think that suits Croatia a bit more than us because they've got a slightly warmer climate? I have been to Croatia. Zadar was very nice actually. Yeah. Just hope we've got 10 subs. We've got plenty of subs, no doubt about that. I don't know how. I think we're. I think we're allowed to make 10. But the subs actually will be crucial in this game because there's people that haven't started people want to see. I'm thinking Grealish first and foremost. People want to see Grealish. And to be honest, I wouldn't have started him in my team as I discussed earlier. For me, him running at tired legs excites me a lot. We are in. We're in Wembley. Masked up, which is the rules. We also had to do COVID tests uh, or be double vaccinated to get in. Look what I found. The main men. The question is, boys. <laughs> the question is, it's games kicking off in about an hour. Will it be a happy hour? <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Twenty minutes, so Spencer. Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean this hour? Yeah. Well, okay. whatever. The pun's over. Yeah. Will England win? Uh, I think I've been saying I think they'll win today, two-one. But I think they'll struggle against Scotland and Czech Republic. Really? And Spencer, as you know, we know the Czech boys quite well. We do, mate. For West Ham, Subal, Suchek. So. Get the, get the win done today and then we'll worry about the other games next time. But what do you think, Steve? What do you think about this lineup? I'm saying we're not even going to concede. Lineup I'm not as happy about, but he knows better than I do, obviously. Yeah. I I I I Everyone on Twitter actually seems to think they do know better than Southgate, though, don't they? Yeah. I'm saying we're still going to win it 1 0 today. Yeah. We'll beat Scotland 3 0. Public 2 0. Not, not even going to concede in the group stage. That's the Tyrone Mings effect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm positive, you're not. <laughs> yeah, no, 2 1 today. Rice the bag. My mentality is in, we've won 5 0 until we've not won 5 0. Would you be gutted with a draw? I wouldn't be gutted because I think a draw basically. We, 
means we're gonna we win the other games or at least one of them. We'll go through with a draw. Yeah. If we lose, it's, it's not even the, the end of the world. But you want a momentum. So I, I, the main thing is I'm worried about Southgate. The country is gonna get on his back yeah. if we don't get a win because he's played Trippier left back. Yeah. yeah so yeah. especially if Trippier does something wrong. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Enjoy the game, boys. Come on, mate. Come on, boys. Trippier have a chance to recreate history from Russia. Free kick against Croatia. Come on, Kieran. This is this is maybe why he played him a left back, Dad. For this free kick. This could be the moment. Good talk. Damn it. Okay, half time. Nil nil. We've been decent though. Phillips and Mings, arguably our best players. Both interesting inclusions, you've got to say so far. Southgate's got that bit right. Uh, we haven't scored, obviously, he's been to score. But Phillips and Mings have been decent. Trippier's not done anything wrong either. So, selection wise, it's been okay. Hit the post, just got to find a way to score. I think we're going to do it. Get Grealish on at some point. To be fair, the Phillips Rice partnership has not been too bad because Phillips has been allowed license to get further forward. He's been pushing sometimes right behind Kane, making lots of tackles, breaking up play, looking good with the ball. So, it could actually work as a two in there. Maybe actually Bellingham, though, could come on. I don't really mind who comes on, or if no one comes on. As long as I think we, this game is here to win. A draw is not a terrible result, but having seen what I've seen in that first half, this game is here to win. And I'm hoping, in 45 minutes, we're going to be talking about just that. Three points of England, come on. about Harry Kane. Don't need an injury to him at all. Still getting treatment. Foden for Rashford swap. Okay, Marcus. <laughs> Fan innovation for Rashford, a lot of people. Love it. Slight issue with John Stones now, who's uh, looks like he's got cramp or something. Hammies maybe. Getting some treatment. Ben White's warming up. Cody's warming up. Got be Ben White for me if we need to replace him. Hey Jude. Bellingham's coming on. I reckon for Mount, is my guess. Oh Kane. Come on for Kane. Stand innovation for Raheem as he comes off. A lot of people wouldn't have started him. Fair play. We're in 90 minutes with injury time. Come on, get the three points, lad. Come on, lad. No. Oh, my God. Yes! Come on! It's over. Get in, boys. Come on! We'll take it. We'll take it. Well done, Garum. He's coming home. He's coming. Football's coming. Boys. Okay, we're out of the stadium, just walking back to the car. Thoughts on that game? I have to say, I'm absolutely delighted. Uh, there's a few people complaining on Twitter. 
what can you complain about, guys? These people just haven't got perspective. That's the first game we've ever won, an opening game of a, of a Euros. First time we've ever done that. So that's a record break from Gareth Southgate. Um, of course, we could have won 5-0. Life doesn't work like that. You take the Ws. First game against Croatia. Yes, we've seen Italy win 3-0. We've seen Belgium win 3-0. But they were playing a very poor Turkey and a very poor Russia. Croatia are going to do better than both those teams. They're a better side. That is a good result. With a Ballon d'Or winner in centre mid. Okay, maybe he's not at the height of his powers anymore, Modric, but we silenced him and all his mates. And yes, we didn't have many chances, but we had enough. We got the goal, and then we sat. And I liked it. I loved it. So I'm here for it all the way to the bank. If he plays the same 11 next game, I couldn't care less as long as we get the result. Yes, I'd love to see Grealish come on. We'd all love that. But it doesn't actually matter until you lose, boys and girls. Dad, are you saying I'm, I'm being fair with my analysis there? No, it's rubbish, mate. <laughs> I want to see loads and loads and loads of goals. You've got to be joking me, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously happy for the win. Um, yeah, it's, it's more exciting if you see more goals, but they didn't do anything. We, No one had a bad game in the England show, I don't think. Well, maybe apart from Kane was a bit quiet. But yeah, we didn't have a bag, didn't have much to do, did he? That's a Spursy comment, but... Uh, <laughs> you know what the big difference is, Dad? Do you know what the big difference in my outlook and your outlook is? Is you've been alive to see us win the World Cup. Yeah, I haven't. I've never seen us win anything. So every time we get a win, we're closer to winning. I don't care if we grease 2004 this the whole way with zero chances in games and win on penalties. I don't care until we get a trophy. Then we can start. Once we start winning multiple World Cups and Euros and with Brazil, we can start being picky about what team he plays and how we should have won by more goals. But if we're winning against a team that knocked us out in the semi-final of the World Cup three years ago, that got to the World Cup final, then we take the W. Come on, you England. <laughs> Calvin Phillips, man of the match. Unreal from Calvin Phillips. I tell you what, he showed me today, he has a bit more than I thought he did, I'll be honest. Obviously, I've not seen him as much as the Leeds fans who have seen him every single game. But from what I saw of him, I felt like he was more in contention, like, uh, with Rice for Rice's position. But they can play together. He went forward today. He did bits in and around the box. He got the assist, of course, for Sterling. He had a little shot at the start of the game as well. He showed me he's more than just a CDM. And that impressed me. And when you consider that Bellingham can come in and do that as well, I, I, I'm much more confident in Phillips moving forward, although I think Rice had an unstated but very good game as well, Rice. So they work together well. Um, Mings was brilliant. You know, he had to silence the doubters today because Southgate trusted him and not many people did. I did have him in my team to play today. I did trust him to an extent. Obviously, I'd lo love to have Maguire in there. But my main reason for playing Mings today in my team was that I thought they were going to have their big lad up front. I think it's Petkovic. They didn't start him, but it didn't matter. Mings was secure. He was solid. He was strong. So there's a lot to be hopeful for. Trippier at left back was a big controversial one. Did we need him at left back? Was there a, a reason for that? I mean, ultimately, nothing came down their right side. So you can't say that he had a bad game. Uh, he, Southgate just invited criticism if we didn't win. But because we won, everyone just has to take the humble pies, all the Southgate haters, and I know there's plenty out there. Take it, eat it, and move on. Because we've got a W. Trippy is fine. Love to see Straw and Chill. Well, they both deserve a shout. But if he goes, like I said, same 11 next game, and we get the win, which, by the way, we're going to get. We are going to get. We will beat Scotland next game. I'm saying, it, I'm saying it here right now. I'm very confident about that. I didn't say that about today. But I'm very confident we're going to beat Scotland. And then I think we'll probably put out a second string team against uh, Czech Republic, which could also win the game. Do not be surprised if we have nine points from this group stage, which comes with the poison chalice that is we go up against second spot from the group of death. So we might win the group. I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I think we might. I think we will win the group. And then we're going to play second, which probably won't be Hungary. It will be either France, Germany or Portugal, which I'm not looking forward to. But if we come out of this group with three wins from three and nine points, we're going to be positive, we're going to be buzzing, momentum's going to be in our favour. Who knows what could happen? But I think if you listen closely, you might just be able to hear the sound of it coming home. Come on, England. See you next time. Don't go changing.